I now give the floor to the representative of Palau. Madam President, I'd like to begin by congratulating you on the assumption of the Security Council presidency and to thank Guyana for convening this open debate on maintenance of international peace and security, the impact of climate change and food insecurity. Palau lines itself with the statements made by Tonga on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum and Vanuatu on behalf of the PSIDs. Like in many island nations, climate change has profoundly and disproportionately impacted Palau. Rising sea levels have flooded our coastal towns and villages, causing displacement, and have intruded our water tables, threatening our water security and our ability to water crops. Prolonged droughts, frequent floods, and severe typhoons are now a regular occurrence in our islands and leave catastrophic damage in their wake. And warming waters have bleached our coral reefs, threatening the economic economic drivers of our tourism-based industry, but also the environment to which we derive much of our local food supply. Every single aspect I've mentioned has a multiplier effect in the fact that it threatens our food security. Madam President, allow me to start with the storms. In 2021, Palau, which historically sits outside of the Pacific Typhoon Belt, was hit by Typhoon Sergei. Sergei damaged 20% of our homes and destroyed major infrastructure, including our aquaculture facilities. It ravaged large and small farms alike and destroyed millions of dollars in crops and wreaked significant havoc on our reefs and our corals. Generations have thrived on these sustainable fishing and farming practices, but now these ecosystems are being uprooted by storms with legacies and lives regularly and incessantly scattered by these winds. With sea level rise, saltwater intrusion into our freshwater aquifers reduces the availability of fresh water not only for drinking, but also for ag agriculture and irrigation. In Palau, we eat a root crop grown in the wetlands called taro. It's a staple food heavily linked to our cultural practices and traditions. Sea level rise and saltwater intrusion is now threatening our ability to grow such crops. The gradual encroachment of the ocean upon our lands imperils the cultivation of staple crops like taro, severing the bonds that tie us to our ancestral traditions. As we witness the ocean temperatures increase, we are confronted with the alarming degradation and bleaching of our coral reefs, often referred to as the rainforests of the sea. These ecosystems are essential, supporting an incredible diversity of marine life that forms the backbone of our fishing industry, a primary source of food, and an economic lifeblood for small island nations. The loss of coral reefs not only signifies a loss of biodiversity, but also destabilizes fish populations and the marine food chain, directly undermining food security and livelihoods. Additionally, Madam President, warming ocean waters decreases oxygen levels in the ocean, which is vital for marine life. This environmental stressor forces key fish populations crucial for our sustenance, like tuna, to migrate in search of cooler waters. The migration disrupts traditional fishing practices and threatens our food supplies. A study from Stanford University on the Palau National Marine Sanctuary forecasts a tragic future if we assume the status quo a 40% decline in the biomass of skipjack and yellowfin tuna by 2100 if the current trajectory of global warming is not altered. This will challenge our ability to feed our people and the people of the Pacific who consume four times more fish per capita uh, on a per capita basis than other regions. Moreover, ocean acidification, a direct result of increased CO2 levels in the ocean, further endangers marine life by impairing the ability of shell-forming species such as clams and crabs to construct their shells. This emerging threat has the potential to radically transform marine ecosystems and the food webs they support. Madam President, few of us can deny that there can be little peace when confronted by incessant and unrelenting pangs of hunger. This is the risk to peace and security we face in our delayed recognition of climate change as destabilizing force in peace and security. It's incumbent upon this August body to heed the clarion call of urgency and to chart a course towards a future where peace and security are not mere illusions, but tangible realities. Palau reiterates our call for a special representative of the Secretary General on Climate Change and Security, who would inform the future work of the Council and the Assembly. We also urge this body to continue to focus on the disproportionate impact that climate change and food insecurity have on small island developing states like Palau, and we invite the Council to visit us to learn more about them firsthand. 
Thank you again, Madam President, for convening this open debate. We call on the Council to fully recognize the breadth and depth of devastation wrought by climate change. It's imperative that this Council, in concert with the international community, moves beyond recognition to mobilize a coordinated and comprehensive response to this defining challenge of our time. Thank you. I thank the representative of Palau for her statement.